What if every crunchy bite you take today is silently turning off the signal that tells you I'm done long before your hand reaches the bottom of the bag? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're exposing the science and marketing that changed snacking from an occasional treat into an all day reflex. Alongside me is Alara Skye, here to unpack why obesity rates in every age group rose together in the mid-1970s and what that reveals about willpower versus food engineering. Millions of people experience that stealth override every afternoon, yet most have never been told how it works. If you've ever wondered why stopping feels impossible, you're about to find out. Ultra-processed foods aren't just tasty. They're meticulously engineered to hijack your senses, from textures that dissolve almost instantly to the familiar fizz you hear when a cap releases. That design lets calories race in while dopamine fireworks keep you reaching for more, even as you tell yourself you should already be full. Data from that era show a sudden, simultaneous spike in obesity across children, adults, and seniors. That timing crushes the idea that millions simply lost discipline overnight. Instead, a global pivot toward cheaper industrial products driven by inflation centralized supply chains and booming supermarkets filled homes with items built for convenience rather than nourishment. Convenience quickly found corporate muscle. Fast food chains introduced ever larger portions. The Quarter Pounder arrived in 1971, while cup noodles promised instant dinners. Yet the most potent change lived in brightly colored packets. Snacks optimized for speed, softness, and sensory fireworks. Each tweak measured to increase something executives call stomach share. Sensory panels tested every crunch, squish, and afterfeel, refining products until they practically vanished on your tongue. When chewing disappears, your jaw stops sending the signals that normally mark progress toward fullness. Neuroscientist Francis McGlone calls this vanishing caloric density, and it lets hundreds of calories slip in before you sense any resistance. Picture a puffed corn curl. Its airy crackle satisfies your ears, but the moment it meets saliva, it collapses, tricking your brain into registering almost no calories. That illusion invites handful after handful, exactly the reaction manufacturers count on. Volume feels low. Intake soars before sanity has a chance to catch up. Multisensory marketing completes the loop. Sonic branding turns the package itself into an advertisement. The hiss of carbonation, the crisp tear of foil, the colors that echo childhood cartoons. Sensory consultant Barry Smith reminds us that Snap, Crackle, and Pop introduced the idea decades ago, embedding memory through sound long before your tongue meets sugar. Packaging positions these products at every hour. Breakfast shakes promise quick energy. Protein bars sit in gym bags. Veggie straws masquerade as afternoon virtue and sweet and salty clusters wink at you before bed. By stretching snacking from waking to sleeping, companies rewrite your daily rhythm into endless grazing that rewires reward pathways the way nicotine once did. Psychology professor Ashley Gearhart compares brain scans of heavy snackers to scans from people addicted to alcohol. Dopamine surges look alarmingly alike. Crucially, real foods, fruits, vegetables, eggs, or gelatin-rich meat cuts, don't trigger that runaway loop. It's the refined carbohydrates, seed oils, salt, and melt-in-mouth textures that light up the circuitry and entrench compulsion. There is no moral failure here. Dr. Chris Van Tulliken reminds us that if you struggle to stop, the food was tuned to defeat biological safeguards refined over millennia. Recognizing that manipulation is the first step toward reclaiming autonomy and protecting your long-term metabolic health. So let's translate awareness into action with four strategies drawn directly from Dr. Mercola's recommendations. First, remove items that bypass chewing, puffs, crisps, melt-away sweets, and replace them with textures you must bite, crisp apples, cucumber slices, or carrots paired with grass-fed cream cheese. Real chewing restores mechanical feedback that signals satisfaction. Second, Anchor yourself with three composed meals instead of constant nibbling. 
When you sit down to eggs with sautéed, well-cooked vegetables at breakfast, or ground beef with peeled, well-cooked potatoes at dinner, you give your gut protein, healthy carbohydrates, and saturated fat, stabilizing blood sugar and reducing midday urges. Third, interrupt marketing cues in your environment. Keep ultra-processed products out of your home, cover flashy labels with plain paper, and decant staples into opaque containers. If you have children, show them how ads pair colors and sounds with emotion so they grow up decoding rather than absorbing those cues. Fourth, track patterns for 10 days. Each time you reach for a snack, jot the time, setting, and feeling. You'll see stress after work or late night boredom scripts that push you toward the pantry. Seeing that pattern on paper reinforces the truth that cravings are situational and therefore changeable. As you layer these steps, Dopamine signaling begins to normalize, and your palate relearns the slower, richer satisfaction of real food. You're no longer chasing a disappearing crunch. You're experiencing the subtle sweetness of ripe fruit or the sustaining warmth of bone broth that actually nourishes you. Results show up gradually yet tangibly. Over weeks, hunger cues grow clearer, portion sizes self-regulate, and energy steadies between meals, without the roller coaster highs and crashes tied to engineered snacks. Progress is proof that your body remembers how to guide you once the noise is reduced. Every deliberate chew, every real meal, and every label you hide is an act of reclaiming agency over systems designed to exploit you. The science exposes the playbook. Your daily choices rewrite the score, meal by meal, crunch by conscious crunch. Here's your challenge. For the next seven days, replace one habitual ultra-processed snack with a whole food alternative that demands real chewing and log how you feel before and after each swap. You'll gather your own data, break one feedback loop, and prove to yourself that appetite can indeed learn new rules. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.